What's up guys, Sim here, and this is Street Race Talk, episode 214. This week, looking at my notes, we have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. I almost filled the whole page with notes for this week's episode. And before we get into this week's episode, we're going to discuss the couple points I had from last week's episode of Street Outlaws Fastest in America. I personally enjoyed the episode. I thought it was really good. I thought the ending was like, it was perfect for how that race went down, because it was just back and forth the whole night. And Birdman himself said, he's like, man, this race is going to take forever for us to finish. Because every single time, it just went back and forth and back and forth. And it literally came down to the very last race. And it was just, like, as crazy as you'd expect it. You had Block in the, what was he in? The Ford Fairmont there. He went to grab the trans brake button. But he I think he said he grabbed the wrong button or something like that. And the car, like, bumped forward making it a jump. Then JJ throws his arm down, and the guy, he still, no, he might have nitrous backfired too when he like rolled forward and stuff. Then JJ throws his arms down, he still leaves. And then the other guy though, he didn't just sit there, like the the guy in the Fairmont jumped. The guy from South Carolina jumped. The guy from St. Louis could have sat there and they would have had the win. But he chased after him. Chase is a race. And the Ford Fairmont ended up getting there first, and they ended up winning the race and winning the whole matchup overall. I thought it was a crazy ending to that race. I'm really looking forward to next week's episode, though. One point I noticed a lot of people are bringing up was, why aren't JJ and his guys racing? And I kind of said that JJ and his guys proved they don't have to race anyone. They have smoked everybody they have come up against, obviously, besides the 405, which we already discussed last week, why the 405 probably aren't in. If you guys want to hear about that, go back to last week's episode of Street Out or Street Race Talk. We discussed in the beginning last week's episode of Street Outlaws and discussed that stuff a little bit, why the 405 isn't in it. But some people were also asking why Memphis isn't racing. And my thoughts and opinions on that is because they've beaten everybody. No one's come close to beating them. So there's no point in having them just whip up on some guys during that race. When we can see other matchups we've never seen before, see other racers we've never seen before. Because all we've seen on Street Outlaws Memphis is them racing out of town cars, which I'm not complaining about that. But I feel like with the people making the show and producing the show, they don't want to water it down with that kind of stuff too much. So they're limiting the amount of time we see the Memphis guys on the show. Obviously, we see JJ every episode, but in terms of seeing the Memphis cars actually race, we're not going to be seeing that till the final couple episodes. Man, I can't wait for that that because that is going to be a crazy episode. But there was that one guy, he was like, man, my car makes 6,000 horsepower. I'm like, no, it doesn't. There's no way you're out there making 6,000 horsepower. And just, I was happy the South Carolina team won. I didn't really like, man, some of those guys on the St. Louis team, they were, they were something else. But I like the South Carolina team. I'm looking forward to seeing them move on to the next round. I'm looking to see, or looking forward to see who they end up racing next. Because obviously, it's going to be a big step up from wh whoever they're going to be racing next. St. Louis wasn't that fast at all. But they're going to be racing possibly a team like Detroit, Texas, no New Orleans, Mississippi. I mean, some heavy, heavy hitters on the street. And I'm looking forward to see their next match. And I'm looking forward to this next episode of Street Outlaws Fastest in America. And now moving on over to the Murder Novas. Now, I know we discussed them last week, but I have some more news for you guys for these cars. And it looks like for 2020, we're going to be seeing the OG Murder Nova on small tires with Phantom driving. He's been posting a whole bunch of the car. So I'm only assuming that he will be the one racing the car on small tires in 2020. What small tire races they will be attending, I yet to know. But it looks like they will, in fact, be racing the new car, or the OG Murder Nova, pardon me, on small tires with Phantom driving. And then they made a post saying, should be able to fire up both Novas very soon. Gonna need some better ventilation in the shop with all this methanol light floating around. And it looks like they were just doing some work to, like, the turbo setup. I think they said they did a new either a hot side or cold side on one of the cars. So them doing changes to the cars. Looks like they're wrapping up the changes because he said they're going to be firing both up soon. So it looks like they're wrapping up the changes and getting ready for the 2020 race season. And then moving on over to Big Chief in the Crow, the main topic of last week's episode. And I said, what the heck happened? And it looks like from what you guys are saying and from what a bunch of other people are saying, because I recorded, I didn't record that last week's episode on Friday. I recorded it a couple days before, right when he made that post is when I, like I recorded it shortly after. So I didn't have time to see people comment on the post and see Chief's response on the post. And it looks like he was changing the quarter panels and stuff because he tagged the wall at some no prep race. And also too, he's lightening the car up overall. Just, I mean, because we were seeing with what Dave was saying, with getting weight breaks and that kind of stuff in No Prep Kings. And this we'll discuss this in No Prep News Sunday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time some more. 
But it seems like some of the guys already know the rules, even though they haven't officially released the rules to uh, for us to see. It seems like some of the racers already know the rules. So I assume that's why Big Chief would be making some changes like that, making his car even lighter. And also, obviously, because he messed up the quarter panel pretty good, he um, made a post. He said, factory, I'll show you the picture. He said, factory, steel, unmodified quarter panels, check. One phone call at Summit Motorsports and had them in stock. And then he just had that picture of the Crow with the brand new quarter panels on. Still, like, it looks like the cut up on the roof isn't that clean of a cut. I don't, that, that might just be me, but I don't know. That's just my opinion on that. And now moving on over to another driver from the 405, and that is Daddy Dave. We're talking about, like, the big three from the 405, Chief Sean and Daddy Dave. Daddy Dave is yet to finish his winter upgrades with Goliath. And Crazy Kelly's putting on this race February 7th and 8th, Tucson race for kids with cancer. Daddy Dave will be driving Crazy Kelly's car known as Prom Queen. I'll show you the picture for the flyer real quick. And this was a car we discussed for a while. Like, what the heck is this thing? What kind of car is it? it I believe I saw someone say it is some sort of willies. So, finally, we got an answer to what the heck this car was. It's cool to see Daddy Dave going out there to support this race. Looking forward to see him out there racing Crazy Kelly's car. That's the thing with Daddy Dave. Like, he can drive anyone's car and he'll take any car and make one of the fastest hits it's ever made with him driving. It won't even be his car. He'll just drive it for someone and go wicked fast in it. So, I'm sure Daddy Dave will be pretty successful driving Crazy Kelly's car. And it's cool to see him going out and doing something like this. And hopefully soon we will see Goliath back up and running on the streets. And now move on over to Josh Aro, driver of the prostitute. He bought that from JJ to boss. We saw it on Street Memphis a couple times with him driving. And he unfortunately tagged the wall at some sort of no prep, I believe. I'll show you some pictures right now of the car. And he got some new uh, quarter panels on the car, just doing some changes to it. The car was a little beat up a little bit. You can see the front end as well. Was the old, It is the old prostitute front end. You can see the paint underneath the wrap. He said he would never paint over that just iconic look of that car right now. Since JJ came on the scene in the street out, I was beating Birdman. He's like, I'd never paint over something like that. So he put the wrap over it. And unfortunately, they got new quarter panels, so they lost some of the paint and design. But most of it is still there. And he's making some changes to the car, just getting it fixed and making it even better for when he comes back out racing once again. And then this, this isn't even like street racing news, but I'll just show you the screenshot that I took. From 660 Streets on their Facebook page. They said, name this OG street racer. Hashtag Fox Body Friday. And it's a picture of Big Baller Coop's pro-charged Fox Body Mustang. And the first comment I see is, Justin McDaniel. Chuck from Street Outlaws. Dude, <laughs> that killed me. I was sitting there before math class this morning reading that. And I just started dying laughing. I'm like, that's because... That's so, like, I could picture him saying that, like, so easily, just how he talks and stuff, like, how he was on the Chief and Sean show with the podcast, just how he is, it's like, that, I just thought, that's like the, that was the funniest thing I saw all day, that's so something that he would say, and it's just, <laughs> it was, when I first saw it, it was just so funny, said, name this OG Street Racer, it's Big Baller Coop's Mustang, then you see Justin McDaniel. Chuck from Street Outlaws. He didn't. He didn't say like Chuck Sightseeing or anything. He just said that's Chuck from Street Outlaws. They, that killed me. It's, it's not even like Chuck's white Mustang's a hatchback. This is a notchback. It's just some hilarious McDougal. There's something as simple as that. I just thought was so funny, and I had to share it with you guys here on Street Race Talk. And now moving on over to someone we will be seeing in an upcoming episode of Street Outlaws Fastest in America, and that is John Quick. He's making some upgrades to the car. I'll show you the pictures right now. He said basically rebuilding and freshening this bitch from front to back for this summer's festives, starting with the batteries. Do you see a couple pictures of the car real quick? Making some changes to that thing, making it even faster. He's always doing work to that car, always changing that car. You can, you saw in the pictures, he had the engine and transmission and everything pulled out. He runs a twin turbo billet Hemi, if I'm not mistaken, in that car. Wicked fast car, and he's making it even faster. And I feel like a lot of people are doubting them and the potential they have on Street Outlaws Fastest in America. I'm just, I'm just letting you guys know. I'm not going to be surprised if they end up winning the whole thing. The group they got, cars like John Quick with his Mustang, Brian Davis with his Camaro, those are some wicked fast cars. And I'm looking forward to see them on Street Dollars Fastest in America. And I'm looking to see how much faster John Quick can possibly make this Mustang. And now moving on over to one of the craziest cars we've seen on the street recently, and it is the Liam Nissan pickup truck. They pulled the engine out. We're doing some work to it, making that car even 
faster. Like, that's one of those cars that's, that I'll show you the pictures right now they posted. They're doing some, they had the engine pull out, doing some changes to it. That thing is crazy fast and tons of fun to watch in the street. And he's one of the realest street racers out there. So I'm glad to see him making changes and making that thing even faster. Let me check my notes real quick because we had a lot to talk about. We discussed Murder Nova, Big Chief, Daddy Dave, John Quick, the prostitute, the Liam Nissan. Mc, I literally put on there McDougal's comment. We talked about Street Outlaws. And now time to get into like this main topic. We kind of got two. I couldn't decide which should be the main topic. So we got two topics as the main topic. First one is Kai Kelly. Now, we finally got some closure on this whole deal. With this Camaro he's had for a while. I'll show you the picture right now. We've seen pictures of this car. We saw like two, three years ago, I think, we saw pictures of this car looking in like the same setup and trim that it is right now. And we were discussing it like Kai Kelly's small tire car that he could possibly be bringing out. And we never really had any real information on this car until now. Kai Kelly made a post. He said, so today was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. Here's why. Here's why. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you because I mean, it's, it, you can, there, you can barely see it. It's pretty long. But he said, my uncle Eddie Ray was the owner of this car and I, he unfortunately passed away in a freak deal that happened overnight. And he said his ex-wife ended up getting all the belongings to the car. She sold it in an auction and then it ended up going around a little bit. And then he said his friend's dad bought it and Kai eventually begged that guy to sell him the car and Kai Kelly got the car in his hands. Then him and Barry Nicholson, driver of The Godfather, have been working on the car recently and to get it to the point where it is today. I'll read to you guys the last little bit he posted just of what the car is currently. He said, I've kicked around many names over the years of what I would call it and finally decided on the name World Meet Ray Ray. And you heard it here first. If you have a stock suspension full body car, you are not safe on the streets. Me and Ray Ray about to go on a killing spree soon as we get tested. Thanks for all you've done, Barry Nicholson. The wiring is killer and thanks. And the framework looks amazing. And he was just talking about some other stuff that he ended up doing in the car. But Kai Kelly bringing this thing out on the street. Small tire, full body, stock suspension car. Kai Kelly will be racing on the real streets. We know there's all kinds of small tire racing going all over the country. Street Racing Channel was just out at some small tire shootout at the pad. There's all kinds of stuff going down every single weekend down in DFW. There's stuff going on in Oklahoma, New York, all California. Everywhere in the country, there's crazy small tire stuff going on right now. And Kai Kelly is jumping on it with his car. Hopefully, we'll see this car known as Ray Ray soon making hits at the pad. And now moving on over to the next main part of the main topic of this week's episode. And we're going from New Orleans out to the 405 yet again. Farm Truck and Asian bought a brand new car. Well, it's not a brand new car. It is a 1963, I believe, Chevy 2 wagon. Now, this car is a pretty special car. It's not just any Chevy 2 wagon. This car used to be owned by Paul Walker. He bought the car and I believe they said 2009, and he unfortunately passed away, as we know, in 2013. So we had this car for about four years. Asian and Lou ended up making a video showing their experience going out to Barrett Jackson and getting this car, because Asian said he bid on this car online and ended up winning it, and they got the car, and they went out to Barrett Jackson and picked the car up in a video on their YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is Farm Truck and Asian. If you guys want to go check it out and watch the video, I'd recommend watching. It's pretty cool seeing them go in and get the car and everything. And the car looks really cool. And... The question is, and the question they asked in their video, what should they do with it? So I'm going to ask you guys as well, what do you think they should do with it? What are they going to do with it? Now, Asian kept hinting at it like, I don't think they're going to leave it stock. That's what some people I saw were commenting on their video said, just leave it stock, leave it exactly as is to commemorate or to remember him. But the thing is, it's like, he wasn't remembered for, like, those kind of cars. Paul Walker's kind of remembered for, like, the import stuff. So if they had something like that, I'd agree with that. But with this car, Asian kept saying, he's like, he had this car. See, so he wanted to do something with it. I doubt, he, he kept, like, hinting at saying that Paul Walker wanted to, he bought that car with the intentions to build it into something crazy. And Asian mentioned the names of the guys that they, that built his Chevy 2. He was also saying some stuff that, what do you guys think we should do with it? And I was reading the comments, and most the most popular comments I was seeing was guys that wanted to see them turn it into some crazy car. People have been asking, and we'll discuss this again in No Prep News Sunday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. But 
they've been like pulled out of the whole no prep king scene a little bit. We haven't seen them too much in that. So potentially see them race this car at no prep kings, whether it be a small tire car or big tire car. Or we know from Turk Nation, they're all about the streets. They're all about street racing. They're all about having sleepers. I wonder if they build this into some sort of sleeper because the outside of it has just like, it just looks like that basic straight six Nova Wagon, exactly what it is. Imagine if they put some crazy twin turbo big block or crazy twin turbo LS under the hood of it, built like back had the car, built some crazy rear suspension, everything. And they could put like a full cage in it and just tint the windows all the way around. So it just, and so it just looks like some car that like someone got it, maybe put wheels and tires on it, tinted the windows, put fancy lights on it, put a fancy steering wheel in it, shifter and left it as is, drivetrains exit bone stock. But with their car, the drivetrain would be some wicked, crazy, high horsepower setup. So I'm going to ask you guys, and for this main topic, it's telling you guys and asking you guys what your thoughts and opinions are on Farber Turk and Asian getting this car. What should they do with it? What do you think they will do with it? And would we possibly see this on TV? I really don't know because we know they have Farm Truck or Project X, not Farm Truck X. They have Project X that hearse the twin turbo diesel hearse they're building. And we've yet to see that. So, but the thing is, I believe they're building that. Since they said that they're going to get help from another shop to build the wagon, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing this thing pretty soon. Maybe even this summer, we'll end up seeing this thing all said and done, or at least get some information on the progress of this car and find out exactly what their intentions are to build it. With it being Farm Truck Nation, though, I can guarantee you guys it's going to be some crazy wicked build and my thoughts and opinions i think they should build in some crazy small tire car because you got the farm truck some huge heavy big tire car you got the dung beetle the super small lightweight car but it's not at that level of a competitive like small tire car with the stuff in the streets now it's a very light body i mean yes it's a wagon but no matter like the that chevy 2 wagon is a couple hundred pounds lighter than betsy here the 67 dart i think those things weigh only like 2500 pounds from the factory something like that so it's a good starting platform to build something crazy so i hope we see them built into some crazy small tire car they will be racing on the streets and maybe at no prep kings in 2020 but to wrap it up for you guys farm truck and asian ended up buying a 1963 chevy 2 wagon formerly owned by paul walker and hopefully we'll be seeing them build this thing into a wicked small tire street car so that is all. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys tune in this Sunday for a new episode of No Prep News. Make sure you tune in this Monday for a new episode of Red Light Questions. Possibly this Wednesday for a new video of Betsy. I'm probably going to be ordering some new seats soon. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not driving the car around now. But I record Street Race Talk, No Prep News, every single Friday and Sunday in Betsy. And these seats I'm in suck they're so ugly and uncomfortable so i'm gonna be ordering some new seats very soon hopefully they'll come in this week i'll do an unboxing video of that this week and then as always new episode of street race talk next friday all these videos i upload go live at 6 p.m central standard time so make sure you guys click that little bell turn notifications on so you don't miss a single video that i upload and make sure you guys leave your comments in the comment section down below i want to hear your thoughts and opinions on Farm Truck and Asian, what do you think they will build that Chevy 2 into? And before you guys start saying that they should just leave it stock, leave it to, for, to commemorate Paul Walker, remember him. I don't even think he wanted to do that. Paul Walker himself, I don't think he wanted to leave that car stock. I figured with something like that, he would want to build it into something. And I'm sure Farm Truck and Asian will be building it into something. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on what you think they will be building it into. So make sure you guys leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. I read absolutely all the comments and reply to just about all of them. And that you guys check out this betsy merch look it i've been wearing my hoodie this whole episode keep me warm out here in the cold betsy shirts and hoodies are available at cmabcxyz.weebly.com first link down below in the description when you guys place your order guaranteed if it's not too late in the day i'll get it shipped out the same day you placed your order if not the very next day again you can get your shirts and hoodies at cmabcxyz.weebly.com or first link down below in the description i also set up a p.o box so if you guys want to send me stuff addresses down below in the description make sure you guys follow me on instagram at simabcxyz again thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it don't forget to like and subscribe and this is sim abcxyz signing out